Hi everybody, I'm Claire from Van Isle Labradoodles and this is episode 6 of Puppies 123. And today we're going to be talking about exercise, how much is and isn't appropriate for your puppy, and we're going to be talking about crate time, how much crate time is appropriate for your Labradoodle puppy, and we're also going to be talking about leaving your puppy alone and what is and isn't a good idea for that as well. So for all puppies, and especially for Labradoodle puppies, we want to be sure that we don't over-exercise them, and, but we do want to make sure they do get lots of good amount of physical exercise. We want our puppies to be tired out both mentally and physically throughout the day so that they sleep well and they have an excellent balance of mental stimulation and physical stimulation. Puppies need to exercise to develop their growing muscles, but it's really important that we don't overexercise them because their growth plates haven't finished closing. So we don't want to have any risk to that. The other thing that's really important when you're exercising a puppy is their hips. Everyone's heard of hip dysplasia. It's not just Labradoodles, it's all breeds of dogs that are subject to hip dysplasia. So we test all of our Labradoodles that are breeding dogs, of course, and make sure that their hips are great before we breed any of them. But hips are only 20% affected by genetics. 80% of that is affected by environment. So we start right from when your puppy's born. We make the nest so that it's as natural as possible. If your dog was going to have puppies out in the, in the outdoors, they would dig and dig and build a little concave shaped nest. And the reason it's this shape is so that mom can lie up here and the puppies can nurse and attach and latch onto her readily and that they have good perches on the dirt. So we make sure that their bed is shaped like that and that the surface is nice and rough rather than a nice soft one like this blanket here so that they get perches and they aren't straining on their hips and knees. So you want to continue that when you get your Labradoodle puppy home. So the first rule of thumb is no stairs, or as few as possible for at least the first six months. You want to carry your puppy up and down stairs if you have a two-story house. So you're going to get some good muscles there and a little bit of cardio work if you do have stairs in your home. If you have one or two very small shallow stairs, uh, for instance, when you put your puppy out in the backyard, that's nothing to be concerned about, just as long as they're not constantly running up and down those stairs when they're little. But if you do have a staircase, then you're going to want to lift your puppy and carry them up and down those stairs. When you take your puppy out for a walk, then what you want to do is remember that the rule of thumb is five minutes for every month of uh, age that your puppy is old. So for a three month puppy, that's five times three, 15 minutes twice a day. Four is 20 minutes twice a day. You want to follow that rule of thumb pretty much until your puppy is a year old. So if you're going to go for a walk, you want to do two 15 minute walks when your puppy comes home from Van Isle Labradoodles, because when your puppy comes home, they're pretty much close to the three months of age. No more than that. And when you go out for a walk, it's best if you can vary the pace. So don't just walk at the same speed the whole time. Do a little bit of slow, speed it up, then do some moderate and just change it up every five minutes. Now most likely your puppy is going to do that for you because they're going to stop and they're going to sniff and they're going to go over here and go, oh wow, what's this? And then they're going to come back and they may even sit down for a while. So puppies tend to do this naturally. But once they get to be around the five, six month uh, point, they're much more likely to be walking and right alongside of you and not as easily distracted. So that's when you kind of have to keep it in your mind that you don't want to be always walking at the same pace. The other thing, if it's at all possible, is to change the terrain. So up a hill, down a hill, flat, off of the pavement, onto gravel, onto dirt, onto grass, as much as you possibly can. 
Now, just like with people who you don't want to be running all the day on, um, on the pavement, you don't want to walk your dog on the pavement all the time, if it's possible to switch it off. Don't stress too much if it isn't, if you're in an urban environment. So if you're in uh, Yale Town, Kitsilano, or downtown Vancouver, and that's where you live with your puppy, and most of your walks are on a sidewalk, that's fine, don't worry about it. You'll be able to go to the beach and have them walk in the sand, or you'll be able to go to the park and get onto the grass. Do that as often as you can, but, but don't worry about it. If you do live in an environment where you're able to change the terrain, go for it. Make sure that you can do that whenever is possible. So mostly what you want to keep in mind is not too much exercise, varied surfaces, varied activities. Now none of this applies when your puppy is off leash. So if your puppy is out playing in the backyard, you do not need to limit that whatsoever. Just don't throw the ball and have the, the dog running to chase the ball and coming back to you over and over and over and over. Give them a break, do something different, play a game of tug, roll them around and scratch their tummy, or just go for a walk in the backyard, have them smell the flowers, something like that in the time they're outside. You don't have to limit the time they're outside playing in the backyard to 15 minutes. The dogs will vary their speed of activity at back there all on their own, so you don't need to monitor that. So it's only when you're out doing a specific, uh, like a walking exercise and no running or jogging with you or following along on a bike until your puppy is over a year old. And don't forget the stairs. So that's exercise. Now, what about time that you can leave your puppy alone? So when you leave your puppy alone, we've taught before that you want to make sure that you set yourself and your puppy up for success. Labradoodles are smart and Labradoodles are really social. So being left alone is something that can be a little bit challenging, especially with a Labradoodle. Now, if you are getting one of our puppies, you will have already had your puppy start to be conditioned towards that. We do that at the beginning when we have the puppies here with us. If you have your Van Nile Doodle puppy enrolled in Head Start, they'll get even more of that and they'll be really already quite accustomed to being left on their own successfully. Now, of course, as soon as you take your puppy out of our home and into your home, the entire environment changes and some things you have to start over again or reinforce. So that's fine. But what you want to do is remember that you don't want to leave your puppy alone for longer than the month of their age. So if your puppy is three months old, three hours is the maximum time you could be thinking of leaving your puppy alone. And you certainly can't be doing that every day at three months on any regular basis. But if something came up and you had to go out, three hours would be the most you could expect to leave your puppy alone for. Now, if you're going to do that, I would suggest you have the X pen and the crate some toys and probably a couple of pee pads just in case. Likely your puppy is going to be able to hold it for the, for the three hours, but you don't want them to be uncomfortable and you don't want them to be frantic and having something to be anxious about. Now you do want to be leaving your puppy alone on a regular basis, even if it's only for a half an hour to an hour at three months, because they need to learn how to be independent. They need to learn how to self-soothe and they need to realize that it's perfectly fine. You're gone and you're going to come back. So you want to be sure that you do leave them alone at least for a half an hour to an hour or two times for half an hour is even better. Do that every day. The three hour thing is only very periodically and only if you have uh, something that's out of the norm. That is the case until your puppy is over six months of age. Then it's okay to leave them for a couple of hours, uh, maybe once a day but no more than that. So if you are both working or if you have to, if something comes up and you just have to be away for the day, you're going to want to be sure you have a daycare situation set up for your puppy or you have a dog walker or you have someone who's going to come into your home. You want that person not to just come in and let your puppy out the door, they pee and they put them back away again. You want that person to spend at least an hour of time with the dog. Even if the dog's not interacting with them, they just need to know that there's a human around. 
This is particularly true for Labradoodles. As I said, Labradoodles are very social. They've been bred to be social. That's part of the reason for their popularity. But it also means you have to accommodate that and understand that they are totally dependent on you and their strongest relationship is with their people. So you want to be sure you're not leaving your puppy alone on any regular basis or for any length of time. Now what about in the crate? How long can you leave your puppy in a crate for? So it's roughly the same uh, rule of thumb as for time left alone. About the same, um, about an hour for every month they are old. So if they're three months old, you could probably leave them in a crate for three hours. I don't think I'd recommend that. At three months of age, I would recommend they only go in a crate for an hour. Now, if they fall asleep and they're still asleep and they don't wake up, that's fine. If they're asleep and it's four hours, that's, that's totally fine. But I wouldn't put a puppy into a crate at three months and ask it to stay in there for three hours when it wasn't quite calm and sleeping. You want to put the puppy at this age, at a young age, and, and this is uh, applicable up to a year. Give them something in the crate, something that's really special to them, something that they only have in their crate. So I always recommend to people that this is where you give them their fresh bones. This is where you give them a special treat and a special toy. So it's a great place to give them one of their chew toys that's really good and long lasting. If you're putting them in with a bone, you don't want to be putting them in and leaving because you always want to be supervising your dog when they're chewing a fresh bone. So they can be in their crate and you can be out busy working, doing, working on your computer. You could be having a shower, whatever you're doing, they can be in the crate, but you want to be keeping your eye on them. And that way they learn, oh yeah, I'm in my crate. I have a treat and there's mom and dad over there doing this, that, and the other thing. Now, like we talked about last week, it's really important that your dog have the crate to have a nice, safe place to relax. So you want to be sure that the crate is a happy place. Now, overnight, when you get your puppy home from Van Nuys Labradoodles, your puppy will be able to sleep for six hours in the crate, most likely. You may have to work up to that. They will have been sleeping for six hours in the crate by themselves here. But again, because they're transitioning to a whole new situation, they may not sleep the whole six hours right away at your house, but will only take a short period of time for them to be able to do that. There is a biological response that dogs have, so when they're sleeping, their body goes into similar to a hibernation state so that they don't have the need to go to the bathroom as much. When they're puppies though, that's not as fully developed and their bladders are still small. So that only works for so many hours. So you can usually count on about six hours of sleep for the first little while. So when they tell you they have to get out of their crate, make sure you let them out of their crate. So that's it. That's, that's your guidelines for exercise, time alone, and crate time. All three things are critically important for your puppy's development. You want them to be independent and confident and able to self-soothe and able to be totally comfortable with being on their own. You want them to love their crate and see it as the best place that they can be. And of course, you want to give them lots of great physical exercise. So if you have any questions about how to achieve any of this, or if you have any questions on timing or how you're going to get this to all be successful for you, please feel free to ask away in the comments. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and we hope you subscribe to us and you get all the episodes in our Puppies 1, 2, 3 series. Next week, we will be talking about feeding your puppy. We'll be talking uh, about raw food and what is involved with raw food feeding, what your puppy is going to go home from Van Nuys Labradoodles eating, and how to manage that once your puppy comes home with you. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next week.